What's up, everyone? Shaquille Mahjudi here for CBS Sports, and you know who this is. He is the UFC's number two ranked lightweight contender and former lightweight champion. He co-main events UFC 309 at Madison Square Garden next Saturday. Charles Dubronx Oliveira, how are you? Good day. Perfect. Feliz. Good. Perfect. Happy. Uh, Charles, why are you spreading fake news? You're getting Dustin Poirier's <laughs> hopes up that he'll be fighting you on short notice. <laughs> What's going through your mind when you see these tweets that Michael Chandler has pulled out? Obviously not true. É loucura. Da minha parte, eu tô 100%. Eu não posso falar do outro lado. Eu tô pronto. It's crazy, man. For my part, I'm 100%. I can't talk about the other side. I'm ready. All right. I'm happy to hear that. Um, you know, this isn't the first time you and Michael have met. A very exciting first fight in 2021. How would you say you and Michael have most changed since the last time you fought each other? I think the fight will be important still. He's a man of wisdom, he's a man who goes forward, just like me. But I want to look for more than I looked for the other. I don't want to go back, I just want to go forward. I want to win soon. I um, think he's a tough guy, always a guy who always pushes forward, like myself. You know, um, I don't want to walk back. I, I want to push forward as well. I want to go for the win, and, and I want to go for the win soon. What was the biggest thing you need to change this time when you fight Michael Chandler? Obviously, you finished him in the second round to become the lightweight champion, but uh, it was a difficult first round for you. I think there were two 10-8 scorecards in Michael's favor. Uh, what do you have to look out for this time now that you have some information on him? Primeiro, se der 10-8 para ele, eu não levei para decisão. Eu não pautei, eu fiz acontecer. Eu não deixei a condena, eu não deixei na mão do juiz. Então, o primeiro round não fazia diferença. O importante foi quando eu pautei. Eu quero fazer, eu quero definir o jogo. Eu quero andar para frente, eu quero abafar ele do começo ao fim. Eu quero mostrar que, eu, que o campeão ainda se chama Charles Oliveira, sabe? Eu quero continuar andando para frente, eu quero entrar no jogo. Eu quero ser o Charles Oliveira. O Charles Oliveira de lado passado, sabe? Que não tinha medo de dar um rolamento entrar nas pernas, não tinha medo de dar uma virada voadora. Não pensar, o respeito é o mesmo, mas eu não quero pensar. Eu só quero simplesmente fazer e agir. Um, uh, first of all, um, I don't think it matters that someone gave it a 10 8 because I didn't, I didn't take it to the judges. <laughs> I finished it, so it don't matter whether, whether everybody that gave a 10 8 or not. And you know, I want to be that Charles that pushes forward. I want to, I want to impose my game. I want to get into my game. I want to be that Charles that's that from the past, uh, the one that's always pushing forward, the one that's not afraid to roll it a little bit and just try to go for the heel or something. I want to, the, the guy who's just going to get into position. And he's not afraid to make things happen. That's the Charles Lavera they want. The, the guy who, who was the champion, everybody knows. Um, Michael is under the impression that if he wins this fight, he's getting a title shot. Um, do you have the same impression that if you win, you're next in line? No, I don't even think about those things. I think about one thing every time. I want to win him, and then I'll sit with the patron to see what I can do. When you feel the pressure, things don't work. I don't think about the next fight. I don't think about the next step. I don't think about the next step. I don't think about the next step. I think about it. I, I, no, I'm not even thinking about it, man. I, honestly, I'm not even thinking about it. You, you're not when we when you, when you think about you know that under pressure or something like that. Don't, things don't happen. Like you, I don't. I, I'll focus on this fight. All I want to do. My goal is to get a win and let's sit with the boss. Sit down with the boss and see what happens. That's that's it. I want to get my arm raised. Charles, is that a Christmas decoration on your fish tank? Olha só, a gente tá vendo decoração de Natal no teu aquário, é isso? Para, na realidade, deixa eu mexer um pouco aqui. Na realidade, a mulher já começou a mexer nas coisas, colocou o decoração de Natal. <risos> ok. Tem decoração de Natal Não. aqui, ali, já começou a mexer num monte de coisas. Fomos é, coisas lá, então, tipo, já começou a colocar várias coisas de Natal, já começou a mexer nas coisas em casa. Bro, my girl started missing everything, man. She started just doing everything. She started putting, let's let you saw that, is. Christmas decorations all over. She just started doing it right now. She's on it. Okay, that's fun. You see, now, let me start by saying I am in no place to judge. I think we had our Christmas tree up until March or April uh, this past year. So I'm not judging. I think people are going to tell you it's a little soon to be putting up Christmas decorations. When do you think is the appropriate time? Sem julgamento, porque eu sou um cara que particularmente estava com a minha é, decoração de Natal. Ela ficou até março, abril. Ela continuou ali. <laughs> Então não posso falar nada. É, tem gente que vai olhar para essa decoração e falar que é muito cedo. Quando para você é cedo demais para botar essa decoração? Cara, na realidade eu não, não nem ligo muito para essas coisas. Simplesmente 
A gente aqui, o que nós temos vontade de fazer, a gente vai e faz. Né? Ela, achou, ela achou que era o momento de montar, já saiu montando a árvore de Natal, colocando algumas coisas dentro de casa, e eu só apoio. Eu falei, vai lá. Se você está feliz, eu também estou feliz, o mais importante é estar feliz. Uh, I said, Joe, we don't care about those things. Listen, I think here we do stuff whenever makes us happy. Okay. She just thought it was the right time to do it. Um, she's happy doing it. She's happy. I'm happy. Everybody happy. I'd love to get your thoughts very quickly on some of uh, the other fighters on the roster. First, did you see Ilya Toporia's fight against um, Max Holloway? And what do you make of Ilya right now? Because he's so far knocked out two of the three all-time greatest featherweights. Sim, venho acompanhando, ele é um cara duríssimo, é um cara que vende a luta muito bem, é um cara que tem um, uma trocação muito boa, tem um jiu-jitsu muito bom. Nessa última luta agora contra o Max Holloway, eu achava que ele podia sim nocautear, esse foi meu palpite que eu dei, eu apostava na vitória dele, para as pessoas que todo mundo perguntou para mim, entrevista que eu dei, eu achei que muito ele podia nocautear, pelo estilo de luta, então é um cara que merece todo o respeito. Um, yeah, watch the fight. I mean, it's amazing what he's done. I think he's a very strong fighter, somebody that's got good jiu-jitsu as well. And and then I mean, you see the striking. I did think that he could knock him out. Um, that's actually the um, the pick that I gave uh, when I was talking about the fight. And I think that, I mean, he got a great fight and, and there was all the chance in the world for him to do what he did. Could I very quickly get a prediction for Makhachev versus Saryukian? How does that fight look in your opinion? Eu acho que o Isla tá um pezinho um pouco na frente, coisa boba. Eu acho que essa luta vai ser uma luta que ela vai ser definida muito nos detalhes. São dois caras que lutam muito bem na parte agarrada. Vem evoluindo muito na parte em pé. Então, acho que aquele que tiver com o físico em dia, sabe, com a mentalidade, com o espírito pronto no dia, vai vencer. Não fica em cima do muro, porque é isso que eu acho, é isso que eu penso. Mas eu acho que o Isla tá um pouquinho na frente, coisa boba, nada demais. Uh, I think that Islam is a tiny bit, just a little, you know, just to say, he said just a little toe ahead of him. Um, and I, I think he's just, it's just silly. It's just, it's just, just some adjustments right there. He just like, it's just a little bit, nothing much. Um, I think it's about the attitude. It's about the guy that comes out that day and just has a mentality to go out there, um, uh, pushing forward and trying to finish the fight. And I think that Islam and, and that moment, I think right now, I think he's just a little tiny bit ahead of him. Um, not much, but he's right ahead. I know you said that you didn't feel like yourself when you fought Islam Makhachev. That, that was a totally different person in the cage, not do Bronx. How did you feel after the, uh, how did you feel in the cage against Armand Saryukian? And what's the biggest lesson you learned from that performance? That's how old. Sim, na luta, na luta contra o Armand, sim, eu tava ali dentro, eu tava lutando. Eu acho que depois daquele momento que eu dei a pedalada que pegou no peito e resvalou pro rosto, eu dei uma, sabe, tipo, tirei um pouco o pé do acelerador, sabe? Mas mesmo assim, eu achei que eu venci o primeiro e o último round, mas essa luta já foi, já passou. Eu poderia ter lutado muito melhor do que essa luta. Uh, yeah, it was me. I was there fighting on that one. I think that after, you know, that kind of bicycle kick that just got me got on the chest and the, mm. and the, and the face, that I think I just basically stepped off, took my foot off the gas, gas a little bit, could have done a little more. Um, but it was me, you know, was, and it's was, it was the best one I gave it that day. Last two questions here first. What sparked your love of horse racing? Ah, in reality, I've been there since I was a My family loves this, so... Então... Você vai gostar disso por, pelo fato de estar sempre ali junto, sabe? Sempre nesse time. Então, isso eu sou apaixonado, tenho um tatuado. Creio que meu filho vai amar isso, porque minha filha também ama. A família da minha mulher também ama. Então, com certeza, é, acho que vem bem de família. This comes from a long time ago. Family. Mm. Family loved it. I love it too. I know that my, um, my, my son's gonna like it. My love, my, my, my daughter already does. My wife's family likes it too. So, just kind of like it does, but it's a it's a family love for horses. I have a tattoo here. Where's the tattoo? The horse tattoo. Uh, oh, that's you love horses. Yeah, I mean, I don't even have my wife tattooed on my body. Cara, não tenho nem a tatuagem da minha mulher no corpo. Então, você deve marcar. Você deve marcar mal. <laughs> All right, last one, Charles. I was just talking to Michael about this about uh, an hour ago. You know, lightweight for a number of years now has been like the marquee division of the UFC. And when you consider guys like Charles Oliveira, Dustin Poirier, Habib, Tony, Max Holloway now, um, Conor McGregor, I'm missing more too. I don't know if we'll ever again see such a group of fighters that are so elite, 
so exciting and have such longevity in the sport. Can you tell me a little bit about this crop of lightweights that you've been competing against and what it means for you to be part of this just A plus class of fighters? Com todo respeito, acho que a categoria leve é a mais difícil de ter por esses grandes nomes que você falou, por essa grande massa de caras que são gigantes. Então, estar no meio disso aí se, pô, me deixa muito contente, muito feliz. Eu acho muito difícil vir uma safra nova de caras como essa que teve agora. Lógico, a gente tem muitos caras duríssimos que estão chegando e chegando, estão né? chegando ali, a gente não sabe se vão chegar no topo, mas tem muito cara que está vindo ali debaixo vindo com força total. Mas é, eu acho que essa safra que a gente teve agora durante esses anos que passaram, foi uma safra gigantesca de grandes nomes. Um... Yeah, well, I just, you know, with all due respect, like, so the lightweights are just uh, where it's at, and just all this, you talk about these, these, these dudes, there's dudes, they're giants, um, that's, that's, been, that have been there, it's been an honor to be a part of this, and to be in the middle, and amidst all these people, is is it's an honor to be in that, and I don't think, I don't think people are going to get to that, we're going to get to that level, I mean, for, or for another batch of people to, to, to set a crop to actually get to that level. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. It's just all, all these giants, all these names. Um, it's just been remarkable. Charles, I want to let you have the last word. So very quickly, guys, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe, tap the bell, thumbs up. Let us know. How would you rank this amazing class of lightweights that we've had over these past five to 10 years? Charles, if there's anything you would like to tell your fans ahead of UFC 309, the floor is yours, my friend. I just want to thank you. I hope you always have, as always, in the team for me. Vai ser 309 dia 16 de novembro. Todo mundo com energia positiva. Vamos gritar bastante, muita torcida, porque isso aí faz com que esse nosso espírito cada vez esteja mais quente para que a gente possa fazer um grande gol. Um, I just want to thank you guys for all the support. Um, all I can ask is just be tune in. Uh, UFC 309, November 16th. Um, I love the support and I love the fact that you're always there. And believe me, the more you give me, the more I get. And then you're that fire that fuels me um, towards the win. So thank you so much.